Hi guys, Cam McCoy with RL McCoy Incorporated, third generation bridge builder. Uh, I've been doing this all my life, uh, but uh, the uh, company in general, RL McCoy, has about 60 years in building bridges. And we've got about 40 years in pumping concrete. Uh, we're the largest concrete pump uh, corporation in Indiana. So we see a lot of different mixes and a lot of different mix designs. But primarily today, as you can see behind us, what we're dealing with is a bridge deck overlay. And we've been having some problems in Indiana, and I think other states are too, with a great, or what I call the perfect mix design for an overlay. Um, uh, the standby for years in the late 70s and early 80s has been to use uh, microsilica at certain percentages, uh, not only for permeability, uh, but for surface friction, uh, other benefits of using a microsilica overlay. We've found just in the last eight, nine months that not a lot of data had been taken on overlays. And one of the things we found that we couldn't avoid was overall um, shrinkage. So we began to take some shrinkage tests, some shrinkage beams. So you, you start finding these transverse cracks that may be due to shrinkage. A lot of people in the past may have contributed that to uh, poor curing, uh, which is definitely possible. But in this scenario, um, in Indiana, and as you can see, there's no leaves on the trees, it's pretty cold out here, so we've worked with it uh, this summer uh, to refine what I believe to be close to a perfect mix. And what I've done is I've taken the technology that um, Specification Products has come out with, with E5 Internal Cure, Element 5, and their nanotechnology. Um, and we've originally used that on bridge decks as an internal cure mechanism. And we found really great things um, with it. Uh, not only did we not have to wet cure after because the cure was internal, as you can see behind me, there's no bleed water. Uh, so you know that that water is being controlled and safe for hydration. Uh, the, one of the first things I noticed as a bridge contractor and a pumping contractor was that pump pressures, actual pressures to the concrete pump went down with the use of E5. So what that told me is it was acting like a uh, viscosity modifying admixture as well. They don't say that it does that. I just, uh, that's what I noticed. So by the time we put it into the pump, and it would go through, I was seeing bar pressures of 50, 75, 100 bar less than a typical in-dot, what I call a class C mix, and that's about 658 pounds of cement. So we would then add, for the bridge decks in Indiana, um, a 3% microsilica to it, and then I added E5. The microsilica was added originally several years ago to eliminate the need for us to surface seal the bridge deck upon completion. So not wait 28 days in surface seal, so almost as an internal sealer to close the pore space. When we put E5 in with that mix, the 658 cement with a 3% addition, um, and then the other way you can go with a slag replacement, we found pumping pressures remarkably less than the standard mix without microsilica. That to me was one of the most impressive qualities that I had seen because the ease of placement was there. Once it went down, I think every bridge we've poured this summer, uh, including this one, hasn't seen a drop of water as a finishing aid. Um, we've actually uh, teamed up with specification products to, uh, to purchase or formulate what's been called Miracle Aid, and it's the same nanotechnology um, that that they rely on an internal cure that also provides an excellent finish that you can call a true finishing aid. So no matter how much you can apply to the surface, you're not deteriorating that top section of cream for your surface hardness and durability. So that's one of the main benefits. So the things we've changed this year in Indiana have been monumental. Now we forward, fast forward to this day. There were several problems with overlays in general. There's several ways you can do overlays. Many other DOTs do it differently. You can have a polymer overlay. You can have a latex modified overlay. You can have a micro silica overlay. Today we're trying something a little bit new because of the problems we've observed in Indiana. In Indiana we noticed um, on some overlays that we did have shrinkage cracking going on, which is why we made shrinkage beams. Um, and we started tracking what's going on and guess what? We realized concrete shrinks. 
Who would have thought? But, but now that we've done that, we've doctored a mix and what I call close to the perfect mix behind us. And what's going on in that is we've reduced cement content. We've increased water cement ratio slightly um, to about a 0.42. Um, it's not it's not overt. It's not game changer. But in in the reference of reducing that cement quantity in itself, we should see about a 15% reduction in shrinkage. Um, that in conjunction with the replacement that I put in for microsilica was also a specification products uh, product which is called liquid fly ash. Now what's amazing about liquid fly ash is is it comes from the same family uh, with nanotechnologies and what I call particle packing. We've, we've, now, we've now taken an E5 uh, on a nanoscale and a liquid fly ash on another nanoscale with a cement particle on a micro scale and we've, we've, we've began to fill in all those voids without losing the water. We've locked in that water and we've saved it for hydration. So that means that you get a true water cement ratio out of your concrete. So with this pour behind me, it's kind of monumental and a lot of bridge guys out there are looking at it going, you know, what's, what's happening here? Well, in, in this, we looked at the problems we had with overlays. We would have some minor cracking. Now, whether the cracking was due to shrinkage or whether it was due to reflective cracking from the surface below, we wanted to eliminate that problem. So in this mix, we've reduced cement content to aid in shrinkage. We've added fibers to aid in shrinkage, non-corrosive fibers, of course. And one of the other things we said is, let's just assume that at some point, it's going to crack. It's concrete. There's shrinkage. At some point it's going to crack. What are you going to do to the mix or what are you going to do to that surface um, to make it less susceptible to corrosion? So in this instance, rather than hydro demolition, which is a common in dot technique, we milled the surface for a flat profile, which will reduce our uh, reflective cracking. After that, we sounded the deck. We cut the patches out, hammered, chipping hammers, and then we directly applied a bonding agent slash corrosion inhibitor to that exposed resteel that was exposed in the patches. So we said if a chloride is going to get into this concrete, we want to be able to protect what is already there. So we added that bonding agent slash corrosion inhibitor. We patched on another day prior to this to provide for that flat, nice surface that hopefully will reduce some of those reflective cracking issues that we've been having. And now, and the final stretch of things, rather than putting a microsilica in, uh, which inevitably created sort of a hostile load. It was a water hog, and then when you uh, discharged it, it was pretty sticky. Uh, anybody that's finished it knows what we're talking about. And then immediately after, it, it began, it, it, it increased the evaporation rate for the most part, making the mix volatile. Uh, you, you went from a 658 added 50 pounds, you're 708 pounds cementitious material. That's a pretty hot mix. So what we did here is we backed the cement down to around 577, and then the replacement that I call for microsilica is that liquid fly ash product. So in this deck right here is the first bridge in the world that is an overlay that only contains liquid fly ash and element 5. Now with everything coming together, we've, we're taking shrinkage beams, strength results, our tests indicate the three day at 3,700 PSI, a five day at around 52, 5,300 PSI, which, which more than meets the specification for our application. So hopefully by making these changes to this mix, what we've done is made an, a, a mix that's easier to replicate in bulk. We've made it less expensive and we haven't sacrificed any of our strength or our performance issues when it comes to permeability, finishability, overall durability. And that's all I've got on that.